I just finished the second one. Cool. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, double major in finance analytics. Um, and knock knock joke. Okay, knock knock. Someone has to say. Who's there? Oh, it is. <laughs> Who's there? <laughs> Ayo. Ayo what? Ayo who? Yo me. Where's my money? <laughs> I'm sorry for that, guys. <laughs> it's great. Okay, Henry, you can pass to the next one. Yeah, I go to Paulina. I'm currently the executive of operations. Last year, last winter or fall, I was with Lucas Horsefall. Um, I did an internship with them. And then my favorite knock knock joke is knock knock. Who is Who's there? Nana. Who's Nana who? Nanny or business. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we'll be back from our next door will be Alec. Hello, everyone. My name is Alec. I'm currently a senior at CSUN pursuing a degree in financial analysis and uh, professional accountancy. I've been with AA for two and a half years now. Um, I did an internship with HCBT this past summer. And my knock-knock joke uh, knock knock. <laughs> who did? Lettuce. Let let us who? Let us in and you'll find out. <laughs> That's a perfect joke for your recruiters. I want someone to try it and let us know yeah. how it goes. <laughs> okay, so the last one will be Joe. Hello, everybody. I am the current controller of AA, and I did my summer internship this past summer with EY. Um, and I have a knock knock joke for you, too. Uh, so he's in advance. Um, knock knock. Who's there? The FBI. FBI, who? Hey, we're asking the questions here. <laughs> I, I did apologize in advance. <laughs> Okay, so, so let the presentation begin right now. Minelia? Yes, start. let's start with the first question. So first question is for four of you. So please popcorn each one after your response. So uh, let's start with Henry. Why did you choose the firm to do your internship with? Um, basically, I have been involved with PwC since forever. I think since high school, my uh, high school had this accounting finance program. So I took a, a firm tour of PwC. I, I was also involved with their mentorship program. So definitely got recruited earlier on. <laughs> and yeah, just meeting everybody at PwC. They were all just um, really nice people who I got along with, um, like more than the other firms and stuff. And all my mentors were from PwC. So it just seemed like the right place for me to go. And then popcorn to Joel. Okay. So um, in terms of choosing my firm, I always knew that I kind of wanted to start my career at the big four, but I, I, I went with EY because I was most comfortable with the people that I met from there. Um, what I did find was that the big four are almost exactly the same when it comes to things like resources and career advancement and stuff like that. So it really came down to the people for me. Um, that's why networking is so important because um, you can lean on those connections and they can kind of tell you about things, like the culture, and you can make your decisions based off of the people if you do a lot of networking. Um, so it really did come down to the people once I knew that I wanted to start with Big Four. Um, Alec, you go ahead. Or did, did Alec go already? Okay, no, Alec. I haven't gone. Okay. Um, so similarly with me, when I was going through the recruiting process, it was kind of difficult for me um, to decide what firm I wanted to go with. Um, and then after attending many of the networking events, 
and mock interviews, I found that I was able to easily connect with HCBT, with the, whether it was the staff or the managers. Um, I just had genuine conversations with them. So that, that's kind of how I decided. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pass it down to Paulina. Hi everyone. Um, so mine is actually completely opposite from all the other three examples. I wanted to steer clear of the big four as much as possible, just because in my opinion, just for preference, I like to stay in a small firm, more of so everyone knows each other. There's not a hundred people in each department, so you don't really get to know everyone. I like more of like the warm, cozy family vibe. Um, so I did with Lucas Horsefall and right off the bat when I did um, meet the firms with them, just the way that they describe themselves, how they feel like a family and they always do lunches and all these good stuff. It just made me feel very welcome and made me feel like an environment I would enjoy being in. So that's just to say, don't be discouraged if you aim to go to the big four and it doesn't work out. These small firms are just as good and they also are very friendly and they make you feel very welcomed as well. So never be discouraged with those. And I think that's it with our popcorning for this question. Okay, thank you, our panelists, for the question. So I will go to the next one. It's a very interesting question and the internship we want. So did you experience any difficulty during the internship or did you make any mistake? If so, how were you able to solve it? So I will begin with Paulina first and you can popcorn to the next person. Okay. So let's see. You wanted the one about standing out, right? No, I'm confused, sorry. I okay. didn't hear that well. Okay, so I repeat again. So do you experience any difficulty during your internship? Or did you make any mistake? And if so, how were you able to solve it or overcome the difficulty? So at the firm itself, I mean, we're all interns, we're training and you know, people make mistakes. So one thing that I recommend is when you do make mistakes or if you do just tiny little things or even big things, never be ashamed and never be afraid because they're not gonna just drop you because they're here with the knowledge of you, you are interning. It is the first time you're there. So never be afraid and just speak up, ask questions even five times if you have to, they're not gonna get mad. And that's, that's kind of the biggest advice I can give. And then, um, am I popcorning? Yes. Yes. Okay, I'll popcorn into Henry. Yeah, so um, I actually have two in mind since I did both internships. But for the first one, it was this Altrix project we had to do. And Altrix is kind of this software program that they kind of use at the firm to um, solve for big data and stuff. So like hundreds of thousands of rows, which in Excel would just crash. Anywho, nobody got it. Nobody knew how to use it. Um, none of the interns and trust. We had like five group chats, each having like 100 plus interns. And it was just uh, this one intern who kind of learned how to solve it and had a uh, like a, basically a Zoom session where she kind of he kind of just showed us how to do it and the steps towards it. But basically, that is something that I, I did struggle with. It was definitely a learning curve, but um, I was definitely reaching out uh, to the other interns. I reached out to him, so we're pretty cool now. And then I reached out to some of the other staff as well. And, you know, they gave me some words of encouragement that um, it is a hard software, you know. Even at the firm, they have digital accelerators, which are people who come and kind of like perfect your workflows or like the all tricks uh, work for you because they're more experienced with it. So, yeah. And then for my second one this past summer, um, it was client-based work. I was assigned to do some tax research and... It seemed pretty simple. <laughs> um, basically told us to just look up some of the public, public information, but once I actually tried to do it, it was definitely harder than it seemed. It took me about like two hours and got nothing done basically. <laughs> so I had to hop on a call with her again and um, she kind of showed me how to do it a little bit better. And I was able to uh, kind of get some more work done that second time, but yeah. 
I definitely should have reached out uh, sooner or asked more questions. So that's something I learned from that. Like, no matter how simple it is, you know, it's like really take good notes and ask questions. Because I think for that one, I really didn't take notes. I was like, oh, easy. I don't even got to take notes. But yeah, no matter how simple it is, you know, on the spot, you could learn it quickly, but sometimes you'll forget. And then I'll popcorn it to Alec. So similarly for me, I, it was difficult for me to understand the softwares that we use during the internship. Um, and the, the softwares that we used to pre prepare the returns um, was Go System Fast Tags. I'm sure each firm has their own softwares. And we also use Pro System. So there was definitely a learning curve in that aspect. Um, but after training, for two weeks and doing real client returns, I was able to get more used to it. And whenever I, I made any mistakes, um, it was always reviewed by a senior or maybe a manager and they would just pass it back to you with corrections. So it, it doesn't get filed right away once you finish the return. There's always people that are reviewing your work. So um, that definitely helped a lot during the internship and they expect you to make mistakes. So. No one is perfect. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pass it down to Joel. Uh, yes, so um, I definitely had some very difficult tests. In my internship, I remember getting assigned some stuff and I would just look at it like, what? Like, it's totally clueless. But that's okay, because they don't expect you to figure everything out on your own. But um, it's also important to remember that they're not gonna hold your hand through the entire process need help, you have to go and ask for it. You have to be proactive about finding that help. Um, and you are probably going to make a lot of mistakes, but that's okay because um, they're giving you a lot of tasks that would be expected staffs and you're just an intern. So it would actually be unusual if you were just like totally flawless and making no mistakes. Even the staff make tons of mistakes. So in in interns, of course, they can make mistakes. Usually the process is they'll give you a task and then you can you complete it and then they'll give you the comments afterwards about the things you need to go back and fix. And that's normal. I did tons and tons of tasks and I think I got review comments on everything I did. Like, it's just, it's just normal. You always have to go back and fix things. So I wouldn't worry too much about the mistakes you make. Just focus on learning as much as you can. Thank you, Joel. So for the next question, it's for four of you guys. Uh, what kind of uh, company culture were you able to experience during your internship? Uh, let's start with Alec. Yes. So in terms of company culture, basically like partner access, collaboration, transparent communication, and working in teams. Everyone was there to help one another out. Um, and then I was able to even reach out to managers or partners for coffee chats if throughout my internship, whenever there wasn't work for me to do. So I always kept busy. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pass it down to Henry. Yeah, so um, PwC values are integrity to make a difference, care, work together, and to reimagine the possible. I think I experienced almost all of them throughout the internship at some point, but I definitely experienced, you know, like a lot of care. And then I kind of just rambled on about like my experience for now. So you can kind of see like what the culture was like, but basically they have inclusion and connectivity networks at PwC. So Lynn is one of the like Latino inclusion networks. So it was always nice to see um, Faces similar to mine there, and uh, you can connect with them a little bit better since you have about the same background. And but it's also at PwC, it's a matter of prioritizing uh, kind of your work and stuff. We had a promotion day, and my team they couldn't make it just because you know they had a deadline coming up. I still went, but <laughs> yeah, they had a deadline coming up, so they couldn't attend. But you know. Still, a lot of people showed up. It was at Griffin's Park. It was kind of like a pizza party picnic. There were like associates, uh, managers, partners there, but it's like nothing regarding like hierarchy or whatever. They were all just chilling, being friends. Um, so I kind of really liked that. Met a lot of cool people there. After that, you know, my associate actually took us to uh, 71 Above, which is one of like the downtown fancy restaurants out there to kind of just connect with me and my team. Um, it was me and 
two or three other interns, two other interns, yeah. Anywho, um, after that, we went to another um, internship, kind of like social event, same, took my associate, so yeah. He had a lot more time, a lot more freedom, because I didn't think he had any deadlines over the summer. So, you know, if you have free time, you can always hang out with your uh, PWC family and stuff like that, but yeah. They also don't micromanage you a lot. Um, I thought they would have, but I guess not. <laughs> So a lot of the tasks you got a handed, you could just like work on them on your own time. Sometimes I'll sleep in and then stay up to like 11 p.m. just working on it because you can technically. Um, but yeah, that was kind of some of like the culture that I experienced and let me see. Yeah, and then I'll pass it on to Joel. Uh, the company culture was great uh, during my internship. They do a really good job about making you feel like you belong. Everyone that I met from interns to staff to managers, they were really friendly and welcoming. Um, I, I only really had positive experiences during my internship. So I was really happy about that. And every time I was um, needed to reach out for somebody to, for help, they were always willing to step away from whatever they were doing to help me out, which was really great and helpful. So everyone was really hardworking because every job that I've had, like before I got into accounting, it felt like everyone was just doing the bare minimum to get through the day. But um, when I was working at EY, it was really cool because everyone was like effort and helping each other out, which is I would much rather be a part of. Um, and then I think Pong is the last one. Yeah. Um, so. When I talk about culture with Lucas first of all, specifically, I would say they're very, um, they're very good on communication. Not only do they wait for you to ask questions, but they also, when they notice that you're a bit confused but are too shy to speak up, they would approach you. Um, they would have like group meetings. They would put us in one room and we would all kind of go over it, which would kind of help because it would make me feel less stressed because I see that my fellow interns are also a little confused on it. So they were really good about communicating that and making everyone feel inclusive. We would have a lunch at least once a week where they would order it. And sometimes we would go out. Our office was right on um, in, on Ventura and Encino. So it was like right there. There were so many restaurants around. So every week it was a new place and they would just always want to make us feel like we're not just coworkers, but we're kind of like a family. They would check up on us. And honestly, I feel like every firm we've talked about today has done a really good job of that. So it kind of sounds repetitive, but um, yeah, that's basically what it was. I loved the culture there. Yeah, also um, to kind of add on to that, um, like Joel said, I had mostly all positive experience and the firm did a really great job of trying to connect us, even though we were virtually so. I just sent a little link on the chat. This was like a video they made of kind of our experience and stuff of all the interns. I'm around two minutes if you want to see me, but yeah. Okay, thank you, Henry, for sharing the video. So the next question will be for Joe and Paulina. The question is, how can you make yourself stand out among other internship candidates during your training? So we can start with Paulina first. Yeah, so my recommendation to you for standing out is go above and beyond what they ask, but to a point where you understand it and do not be afraid to ask questions. I am one of those people that will ask questions until I know exactly what I need to do because that way it's done correctly. And there was actually an experience where I was the only one that went ask the interns, the rest were shy. And it got to a point where even management, when we were having a meeting, they kind of stated of like, ask questions, keep asking questions. So I kind of knew I stood out in that aspect because I, I knew I asked more than enough questions. So my recommendation would be number one, ask as many questions as you can. And number two, once you get the answers, go above and beyond it, even if it's just organizing it a little more clean so they understand the papers more or filing it in a more neat way or alphabetizing it yourself, even though they didn't ask. Anything you can do just to stand out more, they notice those little things. And then I think Henry now. 
Is Ron passing it too? Uh, I think um, I was, it was just me and you who were going to answer this question. Um, or Joel? Yes. Um, so to make yourself stand out, you really have to put yourself out there and challenge yourself. Um, they're going to start by assigning you some work. But like I said before, they're not going to hold your hand through the entire internship. So when you finish um, what you're assigned, try and find more work or see what else that you can do to help out. Um, if your senior doesn't have anything for you to do, ask some of the staff um, that you've been working with if you can help them out with anything. Um, sometimes too much about working the interns too hard, but if you can handle it, let, let them know that. Um, another way to impress people is to ask insightful questions. Um, so you're always gonna need to ask questions about how to do things, but it's also important to ask questions about why you're doing things so then you can really understand the process and it shows them that you're actually interested in understanding about what's going on. Um, and I think that's a good way to impress people as well. Thank you, Joel. Uh, so my question is for Henry and Paulina. Uh, was it easy for you to approach the partners, managers, and the staff? Let's start with Henry. Um, yeah, it was definitely pretty easy. Uh, PwC uses a lot of like the Google Suites um, kind of apps and stuff. So everybody has their Google calendars and it's always kind of up to date. So my connectivity team, which is an associate, a senior or a manager, and then a partner or a director, they all kind of encouraged me to set up time in their calendar a few two minutes just to check up and just to talk to them. So I feel guilty at first because it's like, ah, I don't want to take up your time. You look busy because you see like they're busy 24 seven, but they're like, it's fine. You know, one of the partners, um, Fridays were her days to kind of just check up on everybody. So even though she was booked, um, she said it was kind of nothing like too serious. It was just meeting with uh, interns like me or other associates or people in their teams. So that's kind of how I scheduled um, chats with my teams and managers and partners. I just set up 15 minute time on their calendar. Um, but yeah, can be seem intimidating at first, but trust, just go for it. Um, always have questions ready and stuff. You know, accounting-based questions. I think the best advice I got from managers to try to make those interactions a little more personable, because I was just always asking lame accounting questions, which are cool, but you know, you also want to build a connection there, so you can ask them about the weekend, um, their family, I guess, if you're really cool with them. But yeah, ask them about the weekend holidays. You know, um, you can stay away from controversial topics and stuff like that, but. Overall, everybody I met at PwC, like, they were all pretty friendly and kind of had an open schedule and willing to talk to me. So, yeah. And then Paulina. Right? Paulina, yeah. Hi. Um, so when it came to approaching seniors and management, it was very easy at our firm. Um, ours, our internship was actually in person even though it was during COVID time, they were cautious, but it was in person. So the best way we would know if we're bothering or not is we had a few seniors there and a few partners. If their door was closed, just don't bother. Otherwise they always kept it open because they always see the doors open. Um, they actually would come check up themselves. Um, they were very good about telling us, hey, if you have a question, don't feel any stress, don't be scared because if you think about it, they were where we are. They may be at a higher ranking right now, but they know what it feels like. So they've been through it. So there's no way that they're going to discourage you to speak up or just kind of approach them or communicate with them. So definitely, like Henry said too, don't, it's, it's not that big of a deal. It's not that scary. You just kind of got to go and you'll see how they're just normal. They're people too, you know, they conversate as well. And it's always good kind of being um, in a positive mood, happy, like go-getter when you approach them and you're talking, just so you show that you're interested in what you're doing. Um, so yeah, the biggest recommendation I would say is just to have a little bit of background knowledge of what you're asking about, because like some of you guys have in, I know in one of my classes right now, when you give a presentation, they ask a question in the end. So it's like, okay, I need to know a little more than I'm presenting right now because if they throw a curveball question, I've got to know it. So I would just say get a little more information when you approach them, but 
when it comes to talking, they're, they're so yeah. So uh, I will go on the next question is for Alec and Joe. So this very interesting question is how can students turn an internship into a full time position? So we can begin with Alec. Okay, so in, in terms of trying to turn internship to a full time position, I would say just try to make a good impression, um, show a strong work ethic, and just be curious to learn, be into enthusiastic. Um, and it's again, it's okay to make mistakes, but try to learn from them and not repeat the same mistakes. Um, and try to make as many connections as possible. Always uh, reach out to people, whether it's staff or interns, um, because those might be the people that you're working with in the future. And then I'm going to go ahead and pass it down to Joel. Uh, so to be completely honest, for Big Four to get a full-time position, all you have to do is not be terrible. If you, sh if you show up every day and try, you're probably going to get an offer. This is because they put a lot of resources into their internship program, and it's really tough to find good candidates, so um, they really want to keep them. Uh, however, that should definitely not be your goal, is just to not be terrible. Don't You should aim much higher. So use this internship as... Um, an experience that you can meet as many people as you can and really take the work you get as an opportunity to ask a ton of questions. Uh, if you put a lot of effort into the internship, um, you'll learn a ton and it will make starting full-time a lot easier and you'll be a step ahead of everybody else. Thank you, Joel. So my next question is for Alec and Henry. What happened after the internship? Did they contact you? Yeah, um, Alec, you can start it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so after the internship, um, usually there is a performance manager that you get assigned. So the performance manager kind of reviews your work at the end of the internship. Um, and it's kind of like a evaluation. And then you also have to submit your own self-evaluation. Um, and then as long as you either meet expectations or exceed expectations, even if you're like slightly below expectations, you'll more than likely get the offer. Um, and then you'll receive a phone call several days after, whether it may be the manager or recruiter letting you know that you've got the offer and um, they'll send you like an e email that you have to sign uh, with the offer letter. And that's pretty much it. And go ahead, Henry. Yeah, so it's very similar at PwC. Um, near the end of the internship, you do like a self-assessment, which is kind of how you also get promoted within the firm. Um, it's called a snapshot, not a Snapchat, but a snapshot, and it's based off the PwC professional, which are just um, some tasks that uh, PwC kind of promotes. And they, they have by different levels. So by interns, they kind of want you to like network a lot and stuff like that. I don't know off the top of my head. I should, but... <laughs> Yeah, PwC professions kind of how they kind of get graded at the end and stuff. Um, after that, you meet with um, same. I mean, with my director, which is kind of like the person in charge of you. And she offered me the full time position and asked me if I had any questions. I was like, no, really happy. <laughs> uh, what were the next steps to it? Um, she told me I should just get an email a couple, like a week later or two. So yeah, a week later, I got the email with the full-time offer and just have to sign it. And I think, I don't know if other firms have it, but we have like this portal type place where you kind of access all your documents. Um, if you need to sign anything, you just log in there and everything will be there. So yeah, very similar to ACBT, so, or to Alex, but yeah. Okay, hey, thank you, Henry and Alex, for your answer. So this is the uh, next question will be for all of you. So what is your day-to-day -day task like and how did you communicate with the staff about your task? And you can ask, anyone can begin right now. If not, I will call. So Henry, you can begin. <laughs> <laughs> of course, me, no. Um, basically for it's, for the first couple of weeks, you do a lot of training. 
So I think about two, three weeks of training you do and your schedule is all pre-filled out. So I would meet with my team around like eight or 9 a.m. Um, it was a group of about six interns and then a manager who was kind of leading the session. She was kind of like our teacher. Um, we got assigned tasks for the day, which were like simulations or just um, lectures we kind of had to watch and some quizzes we also had to pass and stuff like that. So that's kind of what we had to do the whole day. And so yeah, meet at 9 a.m. with them. She gave us our tasks for the day. You work on them, you meet again around 11 or at the end of the day, it depended on some days. But yeah, for most of the days you had your, all the tasks you had to do. As for client-based work, it was very similar. We met at in the morning at 9 a.m. Just like the associates and senior associates, uh, they gave me and my fellow interns some tasks to do. And then we would meet again around 11 with the manager as well, where everybody would just touch base and kind of work uh, together. If they had any questions from the manager, um, they could just ask her at, at that time. But yeah, there were some days though when it was kind of slow because it is summer and I was doing an audit. So we didn't have a lot of uh, tight deadlines or anything like that. So on those low days, um, you kind of have to be ambitious and a little bit more proactive. So I reached out to Nicole. Um, she also did the internship she did in tax. So I was like, let me shadow you for a day. Let me see what tax is about. Um, you can also reach out to other professionals. You'll also get a lot of uh, opportunities just within the firms. Um, I got an email saying like, hey, any any uh, interns want to come shadow this um, client? They're doing control testing. And I was like, sure, why not? <laughs> you know, I didn't have any tests for the day, so I learned how to do control tests, or at least how PwC kind of does it. Um, they also want you to continually, like, I forgot the word, but they want you to keep progressing. So they have a lot of resources for like developing your soft skills and your tech skills. They have some badges that you can work on. So all that stuff, if you have downtime, you can kind of complete. And these are resources that you only get during the internship because after that, you kind of lose, lose access to them. So if you're at PwC, you know, get those badges done, you know, learn how to use some of the software and stuff because after that, you kind of lose access of it, so yeah. Thank you very much, Henry, Nidia. Oh, yeah, uh, popcorn, right? Uh, yeah, popcorn to uh, Joel. Okay, so your day to take tasks will definitely greatly, dif uh, greatly depend on your service line and the engagements that you're assigned to. Um, so I can just how it was for me. So usually, the process for me is I got assigned to a lot of um, like pass through entities basically. So I just get assigned like an entity and they would just, so they would give me the Excel sheet for the, with the client information and then they would give me the their information, um, the prior, sh the completed worksheets. Um, all of this is on Excel. And then my senior would give me a brief explanation about basically what he wanted me to do. And then he would mostly just lead me to it. So I would be doing a lot of individual work. I know some people worked a lot in teams, but I ended up doing a lot of individual work, just having like three Excel sheets open and kind of just figuring it out based off of the prior year. And then when I got stuck, I would ask questions to some of this, my senior. And uh, when I finished it, I would send it to my senior and then he would send it back with comments to fix it. And we would just go back and forth. Um, so I ended up doing a lot of individual work on Excel. Um, I know a lot of people's experiences will be very different from mine, um, but that's just how the internship was for me. I, I definitely enjoyed it. I, it's not like I was only just sitting by myself the entire time. I, I did like ask for help a lot and my, like the staff like walked me through a bunch of things and I participated in a bunch of other activities with interns and stuff. So it wasn't like this horribly boring experience, but um, just like general day to day, that's kind of what I did for a lot of the days. Um, and then in terms of communicating, we use Microsoft 90% 90, 90 of the time, we just use like the chat. So you can message anyone within the company whenever you wanted to um, just reach out to them. So that was kind of the main form of communication. I would just be messaging people throughout the day um, whether it just be conversations or 
like questions and stuff like that. Uh, Alec, you can go ahead. Perfect. So um, in the beginning, it was two weeks of training um, with the staff members. We would just go over the softwares that we were using. Um, and then we practice some mock returns afterwards. Um, and then my day-to-day -day after the two weeks, I would basically be on the phone with the franchise tax board to verify some payments. Um, and then when preparing the returns assigned by the senior manager, um, whether it's single member LLCs or individual returns, I would communicate through Microsoft Teams um, with my manager, or if it was a simple question, I would just directly reach out to my buddy. We would hop on a call and then he would just direct me on what I was stuck on. And I would also use previous year returns because it made it easier. If there was something that was missing or something that needed to be included, I would just refer back to the previous year return. And then once I was done, I would just send it over to the person who assigned it, whether it's um, a manager or a senior, and they would review my work, send back corrections and um, if they were needed, which majority of the time it was, I would make corrections. And that's pretty much it for me. Thank you, Alex. So now we've passed it on to the Guhar so she can uh, share our, her experience with us. Hi, guys. I just wanted to hop in there with some quick tips. You guys did so amazing. I want to give a big round of applause for all of our panelists, I think they covered pretty much all the basics that you need to, you know, go into your internship. I know a lot of you are in that position where I was and where a lot of us were before our internship, where it's like, okay, I signed my offer, or I'm in the process of signing my offer, but like, what do I do now? Just like we saw in the chat, that's like the big question, because it's like, okay, I signed it, but what is actually required of me? And I don't know how many of you guys know what imposter syndrome is, but your internship is the definition of imposter syndrome because you go in, you're like, okay, they trust me with this work, but I don't feel like I'm equipped or I don't feel like I'm you know, good enough to be doing this work. But honestly, you shouldn't be feeling any of that because that's how I felt. And I can tell you don't go in feeling that way because they require you to know like the bare minimum. Like the things that they explain to you during the training is things you've already learned in your classes, especially if you're taking like an audit or a tax class right before your internship, that's a great start. But a lot of the things you're covering are basics that you should already know. But that imposter syndrome is how all of you are gonna feel. You're gonna feel you're not good enough. You're gonna feel like you shouldn't be doing these tasks because it should be someone that has like more knowledge, more experience, but it's the bare basics. Another thing I want to say is a lot of the tasks you get are going to be the tasks that nobody else wants to do. <laughs> so in the moment, it's going to feel very tedious because the work that you're getting is the work that requires too much time, is the one that's too tedious and requires like 50 Excel sheets and this, this, that, that nobody wants to spend the two hours to do. So it gets passed down to you. In the moment, you're going to feel very overwhelmed, but take it as a learning experience because it might be like, okay, I'm transferring numbers from this Excel to that Excel but really think about why are you doing that? Think about like, if you look at all those like cells, what you can read and what you can learn from that. So a lot of the things you learn from them, but also take your own time to learn, like from the things that you're doing. Um, a lot of the tasks you get also, like, like I said, are things they don't wanna do. So I spent majority of my internship on the phone <laughs> with tech support, because at the firm, um, I did my internship with Joel at EY, um, I did an audit internship. And for my team, because when you would call tech support for EY, it would take like a good two hours of wait time. So a lot of my seniors would have me call tech support and just sit there for two hours, explain to them what our situation was, if they could help us out. And if they couldn't help us out, then we'd have to submit some type of request to tech support so they can kind of create. So let's say if I want, if my team is asking for this program to do this, and we don't know how to do it because it hasn't been done before. We call tech support and ask them, okay, is there a way to do this? Can you teach me so I can teach my team? If there is no version of doing that, or if that program is not, does not include that certain thing, then you have to explain to them what you want them to do. And now tech support is gonna go behind the scenes to really go and create that new software or put, to go create that new like step. So you guys really have to understand like what they're asking you for in the moment when your senior is speaking to you or when they're training you on something, you really have to understand because another test of that is, let's say 
you're stuck on one that one team, which is what happened to me. I was on one team my whole internship, but there were other interns that came to my team and left. So when that happens, you already have the training that your team gave you. So instead of them doing the training again, now they expect you to be familiar enough with the training to be training the other interns. So when they're giving you all of this information, that is your time to like step up and show them that you're taking it in, that you're able to teach that same thing again to the other um, interns. Um, and it's okay, I know we covered the question of messing up. It's totally fine to mess up or it's totally fine to like not know what to do because another scenario where I had my senior manager reach out to me and tell me to do something and it was not something I knew how to do. So I reached out to my senior. My senior had no idea how to do that. And she told me to reach out to another senior. That other senior, again, had no idea what to do. So you'll notice that some things that they want you to do, they don't even know how to do. And they kind of leave it up to you to figure out, to find the right resources, to find out how to do it. At the end of the day, you just keep reaching out to people until you figure out who knows. And then it's your job to go back to your team and teach them how to do it. So it's a lot of the same things like in our classes, we take in material and if like someone in our class doesn't understand something, you know, we teach it back to them. And that's the best learning method. So when you're learning something through your internship, it's really good to reflect on it with your team to show that if you've actually learned it or not. And one last thing I'm gonna say is right now, all of you guys that have internship offers or that are recruiting or just putting in any effort at all, you're already top of your class because you're already putting in more work than the regular person is, which is why you're here. However, you have to think about the fact that all the people that you're doing an internship with are already that top few. So you can no longer be doing the bare minimum and expecting to go far. Um, that is kind of where you're already in the top 10% and you're expected to go over over and over, like put in extra, extra effort to you know, get over the top. And as a lot of the people mentioned here today, your goal going into your internship shouldn't just be to get an offer or get a full-time position. Because if you're going in with that mindset, it's not really going to be the best outcome at the end of the day. Your goal should be to be making connections, really putting your name out there because you want people to know who you are. You want your name to be out there. You want people to be like, okay, that's Gohar, that's Alec, that's Henry and Joel. You want them to know who you are because 10 years down the line, three years down the line, when they know something or they want something done, they're gonna be like, oh, you know, Alec did that during his internship or Alec did that. Alec knows how to do it. Let me get in contact with him. That's kind of how your whole internship experience should be going. So go over and beyond to get your name out there, be the best version of yourself and it's gonna pay off. So that is all I wanted to add, but here's your chance to ask questions. Please ask questions. Cause I know I was struggling when I was in your shoes, which is why we're doing this to make it easier on you. Thank you, Gohar, Henry, Alec, Joel and Paulina for sharing your experiences. And now please, uh, anyone who has a question, raise the hand feature and ask your question. Uh, Kevin. Hello everyone. Thank you for, uh, thank you panelists for all of your amazing answers. I feel like, uh, I feel a lot more guided. Um, but my question is um, really, I uh, got a winter internship and then also a summer one for this upcoming 2022 20, year. And I wanted to know um, if it's all right if I take both on given their first separate companies. Yes, <laughs> I think you definitely should. It's a lot more experience. I've known people who've done 12. I told you, Kevin. <laughs> But yeah, some pe I know someone that's done like 12 internships. Um, yeah, the more firms you can do, the more internships you can get, like the better. You should try and go for like the experience. Like Gohar said, not just to get the full-time offer, but your goal should be like to learn and to make more connections, you know. I only did PwC, um, you know, maybe I could have done another firm or not, but yeah, I think. If you do multiple, you can see who you can connect with more in case that first firm doesn't work out. For me, PwC worked out and it feels like home. <laughs> but in case it hadn't, you know, I didn't have a plan B. So it would have been back to recruiting. So I think, yeah, you should definitely do both. You're going to be busy during winter, though. That's busy season. <laughs> 
Cool. I'm excited. Thank you. Can I add one thing? Sorry. <laughs> Make sure you let the recruiters know, though. Both sides, let them know, because if they find out, because recruiters are all friends behind the scenes, I'm sure you guys would have realized that by now. But if they find out you have another internship and you didn't let them know about it, it's going to look very bad and you're going to lose both opportunities. So it's very important for you to come in, communicate that with both firms and let them know that even though you are accepting their offer, you are still open to opportunities and you're expect uh, you're expecting to like accept another offer. So please remember to communicate that or else it's going to look very bad on your part. Should I email the recruiters once I've accepted or before I've accepted? I would say before, let them know that you're considering two and then hear what they have to say and kind of explain to them that, you know, like both of your opportunities sound very amazing and I do want to get different experiences. So I am interested in accepting both offers and see if that's okay by them. Like you never be like, okay, Pose it as a question. Be like, oh, if it's okay by you, don't be like, okay, I've already accepted. It's too late. Because <laughs> then they're going to be like, well, too bad. Now you have one. So pose it as a question. See if it's fine by them, which a lot of the time it is. They kind of want you to get as much experience as possible because at the end of the day, you're going to accept one of those offers and you're going to go into their firm having more experience than ever. So honestly, it's a positive for the firm that you're going to go into at the end. But make sure to communicate all the way throughout your internship too with both recruiters. Cool. Thank you, Gohar. If there's no other questions, I really want to thank again for Henry, Joel, uh, Gohar, Paulina, and Alec for coming. Also, everybody, um, I'm dropping my email on the chat in case y'all didn't have any questions right now or anybody going to PWC. We can have a more kind of conversation, you know. If we can hop on the Zoom, just email me. Always available. Thank you for the emails and the announcements for this week. It's uh, please join us this Wednesday for the meeting with Anderson Tax on how to adapt to the remote working environment. And on October 29th, we have a Halloween scavenger hunt pumpkin decoration. Thank you everyone for coming.